Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and we're not done playing with our journey for glazing yarn. In fact, you have probably recently or just watched a video where I did a lot of glazing for one of the 2020 Chemnitz Hanukkah special videos. And the yarn base that we used in those videos is Platinum Sock or DK from Wool to Die For. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% nylon, and the twist is pretty, like it's not a high twist at all. It is sort of like a regular amount of twist. I think that it's easier to get a glazed effect on a yarn that has a higher twist to it. So we are gonna look at three different higher twist bases and create very, very similar colorways to what we did in that Hanukkah video. One of the bases we are gonna use is Superwash Merino Twist. This is Twill. It is a very, very bouncy, bouncy, high twist yarn. Uh, this heavy worsted weight yarn only has 149 yards per 100 grams. And that lack of yardage is because we've got a lot of twist. Next, we will also use Knit Picks Hawthorne fingering weight yarn. This is 80% superwash wool, uh, superwash fine highland wool, 20% polyamide, which is a nylon. It is only two ply. And it is 357 yards per 100 grams. Compare this to the 462 of Platinum or Knit Picks Stroll, which has a bit of a loftier twist um, and part of that is because this is a, like a two ply and also it just is higher twisted which means that we can easier get that color to strike to the outside finally we have muse which is a single ply 100 percent superwash merino uh, it is not necessarily a high twist uh, it is high-ish it's not like a low twist single ply but since it is single ply and it has those thicker plies we should be able to get a really nice glazed feel on the yarn now i need to go refresh my memory on the exact conditions we used but i actually have some more of those neon colors that we used the exact same ones that we used uh, for the chemnitz hanukkah video so we can go start and dye our under layer color starting with eight cups of water and three tablespoons of white vinegar I dyed our three different skeins with that leftover remnant fluorescent dye, the exact same one we used in that Hanukkah experiment. Uh, really just keeping a few lines of color on uh, each spot, let that color set for a little bit, come back, flip the yarn, add more color to the other side to give us our bright under layer for the glazing that we want to accomplish. The color has mostly absorbed. Um, in here there might be a tiny bit of some residual pink um, from the fluorescent fuchsia and the purple pop. Just to review these colors, we've got purple pop, frozen, which is the one non-fluorescent color. Then we have uh, radioactive, fluorescent lemon, fluorescent safety orange, and fluorescent fuchsia. Uh, and I am going to go ahead and let this cool off um, just here in the pan. And once we can handle it easily and comfortably, then we will go get ready to glaze it. We tried a number of different glazing conditions in the other video, but I want to try to go for the deepest color that we can. So off camera, I'm gonna go mix up a stock solution of our toner black dye. This is the same dye that I used there. So that way we have that to glaze these skeins and I can measure out similar amounts of dye. Uh, but we will be going for more, closer to what we had at the very end where we had a lot more pigment in there. In our pot, we have 16 cups of water heating up. We are gonna add one cup of white vinegar and I need some more. All right, that second half cup. And now we're gonna add a half cup or about 120 milliliters which is the equivalent to about eight tablespoons of our toner black. This is a 1% stock solution, which means we have one gram of dye 
dissolved in 100 milliliters of water. And this is important, um, just for comparison, this is the same amount that we did at the end of our last video. Now, I wanna start with the Hawthorne, because honestly, that's the yarn that, a yarn that I'm most likely to glaze um, in the future. Let's look at how nice and bright we are, and quickly go in, one, two, three, four, five, and up. All right, that is nice. I am going to set it into this aluminum pan just so that way I can view. I always add these reusable nylon zip ties because it does help with detangling at the end. The coverage here is actually fairly good. I do wanna go in a second time though. Ready, and one, two, three, four, five. Hoo hoo. I do think I will go ahead and steam set all of the yarn after the fact. Um, I did this last time. I don't think that this is something that you always have to do with glazing, but with the yarn being in the pot for such a short period of time, it makes me feel better about it. This yarn absolutely feels glazed. If I go in to one of these sections and twist open the yarn, I can see the bare areas in there. It just feels that dye really struck the outside and that really has something to do with the higher twist that we have here. As I said, I do wanna go ahead just as a precaution and steam set the yarn after the fact. But first, I actually think I'm gonna dip this in one more time. Um, I got some really beautiful glazed looks on yarn that I just left in the pot for really long periods of time. And what's streaming off it is clear. It is striking so fast. This is fun. So the colors that show through the most are like the pink and yellow. But we will take a closer look at all this once it is dry. Now there is a lot of color in here and I do want to absorb a little of it into something else before we go ahead and do the next yarn. Um, just because each time we'll be increasing the amount of dye in here and it just makes sense to me. Um, so just to show how much pigment, there's a fair, I mean it's very gray now. This is just a skein of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. It's 100% Peruvian Highland wool. Um, this is not super wash, but I am adding it in here just to soak up some of that color. And you can see that in that short period of time, the pre soaked the yarn, the difference between the color from where I put it in first versus last changed a lot. Um, so, I am not super worried. I'm just gonna leave it in here for about a minute. Then we'll set this aside to dye the next skein. But as we do that in between, we can pop this back in um, to create pretty yarn. All right, I'm gonna take this out and set it aside to cool off. And that's gonna end up becoming a beautiful gray tonal um, because we'll keep adding to it. Now I'm gonna add another half cup of our 1% stock solution. And this time, as I come, and we're gonna make sure to stir this up, let's come in with that Muse yarn. As I'm coming to bring the yarn in, I have it folded in about thirds, but making sure not to twist it. I've realized that if I accidentally have it twisted up where I'm holding it, then that will um, add some resist into things. But one, two, three, four, five. Ooh, ho, ho, ho. oh, this is amazing. Let me set it down. This looks so cool. Um, but this is why I sometimes remove and we do multiple dips because there's some areas that got more color than others. Let me see if I, you can see, but this looks amazing. Okay, so I want you and you to go in. One, two, three, 
four, five. Oh, this is so cool. Each time we go in, there is less color in the pan, which means that we are gonna get less color on the yarn. And I see a spot there. I'm just putting the edge in to get a little more color on there. And let me give you guys a close up because I think this one is really good. All right, here we are. This is the yarn that is a single ply. It is beautiful and soft. And if I were to untwist it a little bit, and you can't really see right now because I've got the brightness so low. The color has just struck the outside. If I untwist it, you can see that neon hidden beneath. And so I think, again, someone's suggestion that you can, should add the yarn in multiple times, that has really helped me get a more even layer of color. I mean, it's not even, it's still a tonal layer, but it allows me to get closer to what I am looking for. And oh, this is so beautiful. Okay, let's add our mop, which hopefully is not tangled. The zip tie is a really good place to use to help untangle yarn afterwards, but let's add you back in for just about a minute to soak up some of the excess color. And again, I could just add more dye and keep going. Um, I think that that amount that's left, there's significant pigment in there, but I'm not sh it didn't seem like that caused a buildup when I was doing it in Hanukkah. So anyway, um, I'll check in in about a minute. But while we wait, let's just compare the yarn that we dyed at first to the yarn that we've glazed. The character is really different. And I wanted to have more of a black overlay feel on this yarn, which is why we're adding more dye. But if you wanna see more of these underlayers come through, then like we did for Hanukkah, having a little bit less dye for each glazing round is good. But, I, oh, and one other thing, I prefer to do them one at a time. I find it easier to have that movement in the pot to get the coverage I want, but you can use a bigger pot and do more at a time. I don't think that that's like a huge problem, but because the pot's already hot, the cycle between the different colors, even with using that little mop there, um, isn't that time consuming. Taking of our mop, let's remove it. It's very nice tonal charcoal gray. Okay, and now for our third skein. Now, if I were gonna be dyeing, you know, more than like a handful of skeins or something with this, I would potentially want to add more water with acid as things went. I didn't end up doing that for Hanukkah, but each time I add a half cup of water, I am diluting uh, the, the uh, and diluting the amount of acid we have in here, but we started with so much acid that I don't think that it is a problem. Okay, so this is our twill. This is our Superwash Merino Twist. This is one of my new favorite yarn bases. Two, three, four, five, and up. Um, I really, really enjoy high twist yarn. Um, and we're gonna go in again. One, two, three, four, five. Um, where I'm really, oh, I'm really trying to pay attention to where we got more coverage and less coverage on here. One, two, three, four, five. And wonderful. So I don't think it is 100% necessary. Oh, let me just stick our yarn mop back in. And this time I'm gonna leave it in here for like 15 minutes. We'll let it absorb as much as we can. I don't think this color tends to absorb all the way, but we'll, we'll just see how far we can take it. I know it looks like we added a lot of color because we did, but some of this Colors always look a lot lighter once they're dry. So that is something worth keeping in mind. But 
all of these got that coverage that I wanted. Um, that coverage that just feels like I can see some of what was left behind underneath. Ugh. And that is just so, so, so fun to me. I could probably push it further and maybe by moving it, um, well, here, I'll, I'll step in front of the camera. I don't remember if I talked about this back around Hanukkah, but by having the yarn in, moving it helps me get more even color coverage around the yarn. But that could also help the color penetrate more into the skeins as well. So there are some other things that we could do that would be fun to play with. We could, after dyeing the first round, we can add a lot of more acid to that yarn. So then even on the surface, it like soaks up that dye that much faster. Uh, we could add the yarn to the pot, stir it once and not move it. But we know that we would get less even like coverage overall. So I'm pretty happy with this. I'm happy with these types of colorways. It's fun, I'm excited and yeah, I think that this just shows that picking the right yarn for the dye technique you want to do can be really, really important. So I'm really, really happy with the coverage we got for Hanukkah, but I love what we saw here too. And I would like to play around with this more, but maybe start with even more pigmentation in that original base. And the first color doesn't have to be bright. You could start with a dark saturated color and then glaze over it. But what's nice about the glazing is that you took a wild variegated colorway and toned it down, made it more almost tonal, more subtle. And so this is a great option for if you dye a colorway that you hate and you really, really don't like the colors. Over dyeing is always an option, but if the colors are too wild or you think they don't go, adding a glaze can sort of bring everything together in a fun kind of way. This is something that I still need to explore more in the future. I absolutely want to play around with this more, refine it, uh, explore it with more non-black colors, but I think that I have a technique starting place. 16 cups of water, one cup of vinegar, and then, I'm sure this is color dependent, but about a half cup of a 1% stock solution is a place that I think I like to start with glazing. And then depending on the color that you want, you can have more acid, you can have more dye, and things like that. <laughs> All right, so now let's go steam set the yarn. Out of an overabundance of caution, I am going to steam set this for 20 minutes. It is not hot yet, which is why I'm going to do 20, otherwise I might do less. I just want to make sure it is really well set. Tor Black is a color that seems to leave a little bit of a residue on my pots and equipment and takes a lot more scrubbing to get it off. This is not something that I observe with Dharma True Black. and honestly makes me really want to stick with the true black versus toner black for things but anyway once i'm done steaming i'm gonna let all the yarn cool and then we will go wash everything all right we are really really steamy but i just turned off the heat in this pot and i'm not expecting to see it cleared yet there's some of that like reddish brownish color that is at the end of toner black but it's still like, it leaves this bit of residue that I definitely need to like scrub off the pot. I'm not sure if you noticed at the beginning of this video, it almost looked like there was some pigment in there, even though I had scrubbed it, but the not, I guess I didn't scrub it with like my powerful cleaning agents, just like with soap. But the, the last time I used this pot was for the same glazing video. So just something to keep in mind, but I'm gonna let the yarn sit in here for a bit to cool. When everything cools, then we'll go wash it. Here is all of our glazed yarn, which is looking really, really dark at the moment. We also have that yarn mop in here. And the hawthorn, the, ta the, the zip tie fell off the hawthorn, so that one might be a little tangled. But I still put it on, the zip tie back on as best I could, so that way we would not make things worse. All right. Now, there was a hint of this color that we're seeing here left in the pan. Um, 
from the yarn mop, so I'm not super concerned. Let's use some dish soap. All right, let's see. All right, I am not seeing any bleeding, so that is wonderful. Um, I am now going to rinse out all the soap, put the yarn through my spin dryer, and I'll come back and we'll take a close look at it once everything has dry. And I'll even compare it to the Hanukkah skeins because I've not yet turned those into minis. Here is our glazed yarn. And we'll compare it to the yarn that I dyed in the same colorway with the same technique for Hanukkah at the very end. The first thing I want to say, our Hawthorne is really tangled. I think that half of the skein like twisted around at some point. I'm going to need to reskein it because I cannot get it ordered. But I will say that over the hundreds and hundreds of skeins that I dye, this is the first one where, the first one that I can think of in a long, long time, where I'm like, I'm going to need to go spend a couple hours detangling this because it is not okay. <laughs> and so really having the zip ties on the yarn and the zip tie fell off of this at one point, but having these zip ties on the yarn can make such a huge difference in being able to detangle it and order the skein after the fact. Our glazed skeins read mostly pink, sort of a yellow, green, and black. You don't really see as many of the other hues. You can see some hints of some blue. Here's some hints of some orange but those colors are a bit more subtle overall. The thing that I absolutely love is how you feel almost like you can see through the haze of the black. And if I were to take one of these spots and unravel, you can see that bright in there because our colors are really striking to the outermost point of the skein. And let's pick another point. Let's pick another point in here we can untwist and you can see that bright is left in there. So as the twists move, you'll get some peaks of that color in the yarn and it's just so fun. So that yarn was the Muse. Now let's look at the Twill. And it is slightly at times a little overexposed, which really helps you see that depth. So the Twill is our um, higher twist yarn. And if I untwist it, you can still see that brightness in there. It's a lot more subtle, um, but when you're looking at the yarn, you feel that shallow depth of color. It doesn't just feel like we dyed a gray yarn because you feel the lightness of the coverage on here. And that's that glazed look that I wanted. The Hawthorne might look like it's not tangled, but one end looks fine and the other end still has strands going every which way and I can't get it to resolve. So that's why I'm going to need to reskein it. Um, but on this yarn, you also feel that really shallow layer of color. And if I come in and untwist, again, it's really subtle, but in some of those spots, you can see the brightness um, where our color did not hit it. Finally, we have our yarn mop where we layered this black on multiple times. And this is a really nice tonal charcoal gray. And since we dyed it in the pot multiple times, we have a lot of variation in here, but they're very small sections. And so I think dyeing one skein of yarn multiple times in a kettle dyed bath can be a really fun way to create a tonal. The yarn also definitely has some element of being glazed that just feels fun. It's very beautiful. So maybe I can dip the yarn in the pot a few times and then leave it in there and give it more time to soak up that color. Um, I still definitely need to explore all of these techniques further. So when it comes to Hanukkah, and these two platinum skeins we have on either side, this is the one where we had close to as much dye as we had here, but I don't think I put it in as long. There's no question that the skeins that I dyed on the high twist yarn read as more of a black glaze, and these ones feel more like a gray. But because of the twist and the thickness of the yarn, you feel that shallow color a lot more on the high twist yarn. And so I think that is 
sort of a confirmation of my hypothesis in that it's easier to feel that shallow layer. In my opinion, when you are dyeing yarn that has higher twist than it is when you're dyeing yarn that has a little bit less of a twist, just because it's a bit easier for the dye to penetrate uh, the fibers and you know, maybe, maybe I should have upped the acid even more. And there's, there's way, so many ways I can still play with this. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that you found this video helpful. Um, I know that I did, because sometimes when I try glazing, it just doesn't work the way I want. And then, and I'll leave no dye behind, I'll do something and I'll get this beautiful glazed effect. And I love it, and I'm just like, ugh. I really want to do this on purpose. Like this is that effect that I want. But in all these years since I really did that very first glazing attempt with black, the other thing I've really found is that I'm more likely to have that glazed feeling when the yarn is high twist. And this brings me back to another point. A lot of times when I do a technique or I show it, it doesn't really matter the yarn base you do it on. To an extent, you will get similar results if you're using similar fiber content, no matter what the base is. But the caveat is that with some types of techniques, the twist and the thickness of the yarn really can make a difference. Um, so a lot of times it really doesn't matter if it's fingering or decay, they read very, very similarly, but sometimes it does make more of a difference. And that is worth keeping in mind, especially if you're trying to replicate something that I did and you are getting results that just feel different. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't checked out the 2020 Hanukkah special yet, uh, there is a whole playlist and I explore dyeing multiple colorways in bulk and the series is a lot of fun. Eight nights, eight techniques, eight colorways. It's a lot of fun and you really should go check out those videos. While you're at it, make sure you are subscribed to the Kevin Nitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I don't often post nightly videos. Uh, I typically do these kind of specials about twice a year, but I do publish two new yarn dyeing videos every single week, and I've been doing that for a few years now, and so you don't want to miss any of the content, and I know that in creating these videos, I am continuing to learn and explore uh, techniques on dyeing yarn, and I think that uh, there is still so much more for me to learn, explore, and grow, and I hope that following along on my journey is helping you if you are wanting to start your own yarn dyeing adventures, or if you don't, then it's maybe some fun slow TV for while you knit or crochet. I do have a Patreon. You can find links down in the description. I offer perks such as early access to the Die Pop PS series, some behind the scenes sneak peeks, and more. And you can find all details over there on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.